Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jesse, and welcome to my Tiny Talks podcast, the show where we'll dive into self love, inner child healing, and discovering your soul's purpose. I look forward to chatting with you every single Sunday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's Tiny Talk. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Talks. I hope you're all having an incredible day, an incredible May. It has been getting so much sunnier and brighter and warmer and just incredible here where I live, and I'm just so grateful for that. So I hope you are also experiencing some sunshine and a dip into the summer that is approaching us quickly. I still can't believe we are moving through May so quickly. It just seems like time is just flying by and it's just so crazy to fathom that we are already halfway into 2022. But nonetheless, so grateful to be here, so grateful for each and every day, and so grateful to be on here chatting with you all today. In fact, I'm so grateful that that is exactly how I wanted to start today's podcast of just before we dive in, just saying thank you to all of you guys from the bottom of my heart for just tuning in and for listening and for providing me feedback. Some of the messages that you guys send me are just melt my heart with gratitude because when I first started this podcast, I honestly didn't really have a direction in which I wanted it to go. I just felt like I had a lot of things on my heart and on my mind that I wanted to share and I didn't really have an expectation of if anybody was going to listen or if anybody was going to be tuning in every single week and watching my downloads and my statistics continue to grow is just so warming to my heart because again when I first started I didn't have any expectation of where this podcast was going to go and since beginning this journey there has just been so many potential doors open up and just shed light in my life of just an area of my life that I did not think I would ever go down, which is the route of public speaking and podcasting and being a coach and all of those things that I didn't think were even potentially even possible for me. And I'm just seeing it more and more clearly. And I just have you guys to thank for providing me with that because if I didn't hear your guys' feedback and you guys weren't tuning in and weren't downloading and weren't listening, I don't know where I would be right now because we often give up things so easily based on our own perception. But when I can just hear the gratitude in your guys' messages, it just encourages me to keep going. So before we dive in for today, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in every single week. Tiny Talks has now been going for 19 weeks consecutively, which is such a huge milestone. And I'm just so proud of myself that I've been able to remain consistent and keep the consistency up because that truly is one of the hardest things about living this human experience is being consistent. We have such a hard time being consistent in areas of our life, but when we can find those things that we're passionate about, you'll begin to realize that consistency comes a little bit easier when you're passionate about what you're doing. It definitely doesn't make it easy by by no stretch of the imagination, but it definitely makes it easier and encouraging to come on here when I know that people are listening and people care and people want me to keep going. So again, thank you guys so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm just so thankful and excited to be here today. And I guess it's kind of fitting that I started today's episode off with that gratitude because today's episode is all about ways to spread kindness. And now before I lose you, because I think we often think, you know, I I can be kind, I can do kind things, like I do little acts, but I really just want to dive into like why it's so important and why little acts of kindness might seem so minuscule, but how they can really make such a big impact on society without us even realizing that. So the first thing that I want to start off with was just that energy and kindness and just, well, any energy at all has a ripple effect. And I just want you to think about that for a moment of maybe there's been a time that you were at the grocery store, for example, and somebody did something rude. Maybe they cut you off with their cart. Maybe they said something. Maybe they 
whispered something under their breath, whatever it is. And the first thing that we have in our mind is like, geez, they're having a bad day. I wonder what happened in their day, right? There's often that saying like, who peed near frosted flakes or whatever the saying is, right? We often go to that of, geez, like what happened in your day today? And then we often can take that and then that shapes our energy because then we're feeling the tension be off of that person. And then we might continue to be a little more tense on the rest of our grocery trip of like, oh, like I can't believe that person did that. And, oh, and then we're operating out of a state of frustration and anger at that point, right? And then maybe we get into our vehicles to leave and then we want to cut somebody off and then we're grouchy and then we go home and then we're grouchy because that thing that that person did at the grocery store and let's say we're going home to our family and now our family is wondering why you brought that home and now they're all angry and you can just really see how if we don't interrupt and aren't aware of how things affect us, we can often just continue that ripple. And this happens all the time. And that's why social media is so important to have clear boundaries because social media is such an easy place to get sucked into that negativity and to continue for that to spiral, right? Think of when that one person comments something negative, you often then see like a big thread following it of people just like continuing that thread. But imagine if that positivity approach had the same effect. And I'm here to tell you right now that it does. Positivity has the same ripple effect as negativity. But we often hold on to the negative things more than we hold on to the positive things. Right? For example, if we're walking in the grocery store and someone holds the door for us, often by the time we get into the grocery store, we've already forgotten about that. But if we went to walk in the store and someone completely cut us off, we'll often remember that as we're walking around and feel that frustration, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is that any energy has a ripple effect, and but that we quickly or naturally will see the negative and hold on to that more. But again, positivity has the same effect. So let's say, and that's exactly what this whole podcast is about, is ways to spread kindness. Because if we spread more kindness and just love and positive energy, that has the same ripple effect. Because although holding the door for someone or letting someone go ahead of you in the grocery store, I'm using the grocery store a lot because that seems to be where there's a, a lot of interaction that we can all relate to. That can really impact someone's day for the difference. And so being mindful of how we're treating other people in every single moment is so crucial. I want you to think of a time that maybe someone did something just utterly nice for you for no reason, a stranger, a family member, whoever it is, just did went out of their way to do something kind for you. That should make you feel good. That should make you feel gratitude right? We should feel love and validated and appreciated when people do those unexpected things. This actually happened to me a couple weeks ago and this happens quite frequently actually where I live and every time it just hits me right in the feels. (laughs) But oftentimes I'll be going through the drive-thru to get a coffee and I'll get to the window and they'll say the person in front of you actually paid for your order. And my natural response is like, oh my gosh, no they didn't. Like, wow, okay, can I pay for the person behind me? And then that continues. And then I hope that when I drive away, that person behind me feels the same way and then they want to pay for the first person behind them. And then that ripple effect keeps going. And I just remember when that happened and somebody paid for my order, I just drove away feeling so much gratitude gratitude for humanity. And just that there's so many good people out there and I just left feeling like I want to go do kind things for other people. And so that just shows again that positive energy also has the same ripple effect and can just make us feel really, really good. And the thing is, is that when we help other people or we do things for other people, it not only positively affects that other person, but it actually positively affects us. Because when we do things to help other people or to spread kindness or to go out of our way, And I will just say doing all these things out of our heart, not out of an egotistical perspective, so not wanting anything in return, just genuinely doing nice things because you want to, that actually releases endorphins in our brain. And endorphins are basically considered like one of our four happy hormones. Endorphins are our body's natural painkillers. They are our positive, happy feelings that we get 
when we eat chocolate, when we have intercourse, when we're around people that we love, right? It's that same chemical that's released when we spread positivity and we treat other people with kindness. And how stinking cool is that? That our body has the chemicals and the reaction to be able to pump that out to our brain and our body when we do kind things. And the thing about that is it actually in a way kind of gets addictive, but addictive in a good way that we get so obsessed with that feeling of just making other people feel good and spreading love and spreading kindness. And it makes us feel so good that we want to just keep doing it. And that is just such a beautiful, amazing state to operate out of. And I think that when we operate out of that state for so long and our our energy is so high and we're just radiating, you can often identify those people. Because those people will walk in the room and you'll just feel the light. You'll just feel the difference. Think of those people in your life that just radiate that love and that kindness and positivity and you just, you want to be around them, right? You feel like they, they fill your cup. They don't deplete it. You feel seen, you feel heard, you feel validated, right? And that's because again, I've talked about like our, our energy and our frequency multiple times, but when our frequency is operating at such a high state, we want to be an energetic match for that. We want to raise up to that. Because let's say I'm operating out of anger and fear and resentment and I walk into a room and somebody is in there operating out of a state of enlightenment and joy and love. My energy is not going to be a match for theirs, but because mine's lower and theirs is higher, my energy is going to try to bring them down. But the thing is, is when we can hold our energy high and bring that energy up, it can often be uncomfortable for people because if that's like foreign to us to understand that vibration, if it's not a vibrational match for us, it can be new and it can be overwhelming. But the more that we can spread that and normalize that we are able to operate out of a higher frequency, the more that that's going to trickle down and radiate and bring us all up as a collective. Our mindset often thinks of that concept in reverse, right? Where we allow one person to walk in a room and everybody's energy shifts. Everybody that was maybe smiling and happy and goofing around, as soon as one person walks in, that ends, that cuts off, right? Because that's often a low vibrational energy walking in. And we can all think of those examples and those people. But imagine again, if we can put that in reverse. If someone, if you can be that person, and I always say, if you can't find the light, be the light. Be that person. And again, that comes from operating out of a state of self-love Because in order to genuinely radiate positivity, it has to be from a state of love and self-acceptance. It can't be out of a state of scarcity because people can tell when things are real and when they're not. And the only way to genuinely radiate that is to have that self-love and self-compassion first. So now I kind of want to dive into what this podcast episode is all about, which is ways to spread kindness. And again, A small gesture might not seem like a big deal or might not seem like it's having an impact, but just like anything in life, it's all about your mindset. What was your intention when you did that kind act? Were you just doing it just to be kind or were you doing it in the hopes of getting something in return? Small acts of kindness can radiate big time. And again, like I was saying earlier, we often focus on those negative small gestures bigger or higher than we do the positive ones because again that's just how our brain is wired to work but small gestures of kindness have such a ripple effect whether we realize it or not and we might not always know if we made someone's day we might not always know if we ruined someone's day quote unquote but it's how that person feels there's been times where people have done just the simplest things of I'm using the grocery store a lot but Passing me a cart when I'm walking in and saying hello. Just that welcome, right? What do us humans want? To be loved, to be seen, to be validated, and to be heard. And when we can walk into a room and feel welcome and accepted and feel like you can walk in, you're a lot more relaxed, right? Your body isn't so much on edge. You feel, okay, like this is a safe place to be. I can keep going on and and operate out of that state while I'm in this room and hopefully leave with that same energy. And so don't undermine 
how much small acts of kindness can radiate. And so the reason that I'm even talking about all this is because last week I kind of just made a promise to myself. A promise to myself to just be quote unquote extra. And I don't mean that again in a negative way, but just to be intentionally nice when I'm out and about because I'm definitely someone who when I'm concentrated or when I'm I have a list of things to do if I have to go to point A to point B I notice myself my face I consider myself to have RBF which is resting bitch face or I might have messed up that acronym there but basically my face when I'm relaxed can just look very intimidating and I will just say during COVID when we had masks on it was kind of great in a way because I was able to hide that But I'm just trying to bring more awareness to myself and to my face and how I might appear to an outside person. Because I have heard people say to me, you know, you kind of seem unapproachable and intimidating. And I that for a long time took a while to settle with me because I thought that that meant that people thought that I was mean or I was negative. When in fact, when as soon as someone would say hi, I would smile they would say, wow, I didn't, I wouldn't have realized that just looking at you. So I made a promise to myself a week ago to be extra and just be mindful of how my face and my eyes and my contact and my, my body language and my self-expression and my words are around other people because it has such a big difference and such a big impact. And so I promised myself to just be intentional about trying to make someone's day. So when I'm talking to the grocery clerk, when I'm checking out, how are you? How's your day? Sparking conversation, you know, getting to know someone. Someone's walking in the aisle of same as you. Again, grocery store example, you're both looking at the same thing, making a joke out of it. Oh, have you ever tried this before? Right? Just being outgoing. And again, I know that we are all different in the ways that we express ourselves and how we are. And that's why it's so important to do things that are unique and comfortable for you. But I can guarantee you that even two years ago, I wouldn't have even been able to say anything like that to any person. I wanted no attention. I wanted nothing to do with that. But when I started to realize the effects of how our energy can really come back to us in a positive way, again, out of a state of love, it truly is just a beautiful way to act out of. And I just imagine a world that we all act out of that state. And yes, it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. But are you taking your frustration from one place or person or thing or event and putting that onto someone who has nothing to do with that? That is where we are all so guilty. We take a negative situation and we pour it into a completely different area. And so then that negativity is now in a different area and then that goes into a different area But again, bringing awareness to what if that was kindness that was being poured to each and every one of those ideas or those places. And I also just feel like with social distancing that has happened for the last two years and with technology and just all the things that we have in in today's world that are so great, but they also really do have a negative effect that can come out of that. Just like anything, there's always a positive and always a negative. It's that balance of finding the two. But I truly think we've just become so disconnected from each other. We're just so in that state of anybody could be a potential threat, right? We've lived out of that state for two years of social distancing, keep your distance, oh, you're too close, like stay the six feet apart, whatever it is that we've almost become fearful of each other. And I think that that is okay in a sense of that I I get why it happened but coming back to how that might still be playing effect into our world now and where that might continue to trickle into in the coming years because if we're all viewing strangers and other people literally as stranger danger like this person might have a virus or something that might kill me if we're operating out of that state for the rest of our lives that can really be detrimental honestly to human society and so the more that we can just find ways to find that connection again in whatever way shape or form is comfortable for you it is about beginning to recognize where you are at and how this has affected you and where you want to go from here right and so another point that I I had kind of thought of is that 
we're often so nice and patient and compassionate and loving and just have more space for the people that we know. But it often seems like as soon as it's a stranger, it's like all the empathy goes away. And I witnessed this the other day. I was driving down a country road and there was this driver who was going a little bit slow, slower than maybe what they should have been going. And this, there was that car and then there was a car between me and that driver and then there was me. And the car that was in front of me decided to just honestly very ignorantly speed past this driver and meanwhile flipping them off at the same time for driving slow. And all I could think to myself is if that person knew that the person in front of them was their mom or their dad or their grandparent or a sibling or a family member or a friend, they would have had a lot more compassion, right? And I I think we're all so guilty of that where we're so quick to do things like that to strangers because we think that it won't affect us or won't come back to us because we don't know them and we can just close the door. But think about how that person driving must have felt. Maybe that person only feels safe going just the speed limit, right? Maybe that person isn't super comfortable driving. Who knows? There's a million reasons why that person might have been driving slower. But when we just get that state of anger and rage and we just want to push that onto someone else because we feel frustrated, I just kept driving behind that person hoping that they didn't see that person and give them the middle finger because it just made me so uncomfortable to witness something like that. And it just brought into, brought light into my life and awareness that we're so quick to do things like that to people that we don't know. But unless it's family, pretty much everybody in your life was once a stranger. Even family members were once a stranger. We are all just human beings on this planet. Who knows what our connection is? Who knows how that person could come back into our life in some way, shape, or form? The world operates in very weird, unpredictable ways. Imagine if we just treated everybody the same. And again, yes, there's there's rhyme or reasons to this and, and people do horrendous things and people, you know, karma comes around, whatever it is, but we are all people we're all human beings so i just that mindset of treating strangers with no empathy is just something i wanted to bring shed light on to see maybe how you've been acting out of that state how are you treating strangers when you're out at busy places when you're in traffic everybody is just trying to provide to their family to get home safe to get to where they're going to get to work to come home everybody is trying to accomplish something and so having that in the back of your mind And so now, kind of to shed light on today's podcast, I'm going to dive into some ways, some simple ways, some things that you've probably already done, some easy ways. Some of these are free and effortless. Some of them might cost a little bit of money, whatever it is. I just wanted to shed some light on 15 ways that we can spread kindness. And I'm just going to kind of hammer through these. And so the first one, and one that is so easy to do and I will just say that whenever this happens to me I just feel so seen and that's to send someone a card in the mail or a note or just a loving text message or just a message in general just something kind it doesn't have to be a lot of work it doesn't have to be a lot of effort just telling someone something nice let them know you were thinking about them let them know you love them what are things you love about them what are things you appreciate about them So sending someone a card or a note, so fun. The next one is making a call. Randomly call someone up that you've been thinking about that you haven't spoke to in a while. How are they doing? What's going on? Checking in. And again, for all these operating out of the state of your heart, leading with your heart, not your ego of hoping to get something in return. Because the thing about karma, and we often view karma as negative, but karma is also positive energy. What we radiate out will circle back. When it will circle back, who's to say? No one knows how far you've thrown that boomerang. So no one knows when that's going to come back. But positivity is the same thing. So making sure you're doing it out of a state of love and again, not egotistical approach. The third one 
is to clean a house or a room or to organize something for a family member or a friend. If you're noticing maybe one of your mom, your friends is a new mom and she's struggling to keep up with the tidiness or the chores, offer to help a hand. Maybe one of your grandparents is just needing some help in lifting some boxes, offer to go help them without anything in return. If your neighbor, you see your neighbor is moving, offer to go help them with moving boxes. Whatever it is to just lend a helping hand. A helping hand is just so impactful. And I do just want to say that a couple weeks ago, I was doing deliveries for work. And I had so many boxes that I had to take into all these schools. And it was just taking me so much time because I was doing it by myself. And I'm definitely someone who has a hard time asking for help. And I'm learning to get better at, at asking for help. But when I was at this one particular school, there was three students outside and they seen me struggling and they came over and they offered to help. And so instead of doing what I was doing in five trips, I was able to do it in two with the help of these incredible students. And they have no idea how much that just sped up my day to go to the next process and help the next school. And so small things like that really do just radiate and help so, so much. The fourth one, which is something that I actually want to do today because I'm noticing there's a lot of beautiful wildflowers around where I live, but it's to pick wildflowers and to just gift them to someone. Maybe just leave them on a neighbor's porch with a kind note. Maybe go give them to a friend. Maybe give them to a random stranger. Just picking some flowers and giving them to someone. It costs nothing, it's simple, and it's easy. My fifth one is to smile and say hi to people when you're out on your walk or you're out and about. Just smiling. Again, with masks. We've worn masks for so long that we've kind of forgotten about those facial expressions. I know I definitely have of what my face is doing again when I'm walking around. So I try to be intentional to look up and to smile at people and to say hi. And you'd be amazed at how many people you can just see them light up and almost be caught off guard when I say hi. Because I think it's become so rare to do that for some reason, which is just so weird to me. If you see a human, say hi, how are you? Enjoy your day, it's a beautiful day, out for a walk, whatever, that small talk. That small talk is just honestly so heartwarming sometimes because it's a connection. Number six, and I mentioned this one with my story that sparked this idea, pay for the order behind you, pay for the coffee behind you. Even if maybe you don't have enough to pay for that, if you have 10 cents left over, leave that at the counter and say, put this towards the person behind me, right? With all of these points, it's all about giving and operating with what you have. It's not about giving more than you have the means to do because then that comes back and hurts us. But giving what you can where you can. Number seven, this is a great example of something that's free and easy to do, which is holding the door. And I love that this has become a joke that this is like a Canadian thing to hold the door. But it's really not a Canadian thing. It's it's a human being thing. If someone's walking within like a reasonable amount of steps away from you, hold the door open for them. There's nothing that makes me more unseen than when I'm following directly behind someone and they, they know that I'm there and they just almost sneak in the door and close it behind me. It almost just makes you feel crummy and icky. And again, it's not always intentional. We don't always do those things intentionally and it, you just kind of brush it off. But holding the door has such a positive ripple effect especially if someone's hands are full or they have coffee and stuff in their hand whatever it is holding the door super super easy thing to do number eight being extra kind to staff when you're going somewhere so whether that be a bartender or a waitress or a clerk or a salesman or whatever it is just being extra kind we often express our energy so negatively towards people in the retail industry because if things are slower or things are backed up we get frustrated and we often take that out at the cashier or the person when in reality that's not their fault that's not you know if people are trying their best and doing their best it's so important that we realize that and whenever I'm out and about somewhere and there's always seems to be that one person who has to be extreme in their negativity and it just makes me feel so icky and I'll often find myself apologizing for somebody else's behavior because it's just honestly so unacceptable. And I have no tolerance for people that are un like for no reason rude 
to staff out and about. So just being extra kind and grateful that I've been a server, I've been a bartender, I am right now I serve, right? I've been a front desk clerk, I've worked guest services, I've done all those things. And I will just say that those customers that come in and act like that, it really does make you feel like you don't belong and like like you're not a good worker and it's just not a good feeling to have. So being extra kind and just aware of how you're treating everybody, everybody at all, but especially when you're going into retail sales places like that. Number nine, this is something that I've actually been doing whenever I go to the market or out and about and I actually have a stack of just affirmation cards about how to love yourself and I love to just randomly place them different places and sometimes I'll stick a sticky note on the front and I'll, and I'll just say to whoever finds this and it's just a positive message and there's just something about it that is so beautiful because I don't leave any trace of who I am there's no way to contact me it's simply just a way for someone to find something and it makes them happy and I remember this program where I used to live in Alberta people would paint rocks and they would leave them around for people to find and they'd paint like ladybugs on these rocks and sunshines and rainbows. What That sounded so like la 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 when I said that. Sunshines and rainbows and unicorns. But honestly, and then when you'd find those rocks, you would just be super excited. And so I like to leave little cards and notes around random places for people to find. It's such an easy, free thing that you can do. Number 10, compliment someone. If you like someone's shirt, tell them you like their shirt. (laughs) If you like someone's hat, tell them you like their hat. It's so, we often think all these things, but we don't say them. And I'm trying to get better at that because I'll often be looking at someone and I'm just thinking kind things of like how much I love their dress or how much I love their purse, whatever. And I don't say it. And oftentimes like that person would think that I'm judging them. Like we've all experienced that before in our life where someone's looking at us And the first thing our brain tells us is they are judging us. There's something wrong with us. But oftentimes, more often than not, someone's thinking good things. So imagine if we just said them. So say the compliment. It also just helps radiate your own confidence and your self-love of just being able to speak up and say those things. So compliment someone. Again, genuinely. Don't just scarf something up just for the means of saying something. Genuinely say it if you feel it. Number 11, pick up garbage and debris and stuff laying around. I try my absolute best to bring just a grocery bag and one pair of gloves with me when I'm out for a walk with Bailey because there's just always garbage, always garbage laying around. There's always garbage that's going to need to be picked up. And I always just tell myself, I'm like, imagine if every human being picked up two pieces of garbage. Do you know how much better of a place we would live in if every human picked up two pieces of garbage? we'd be off to the races in in a good direction. So if you're out and about, be mindful of that. Maybe throw a pair of gloves in your vehicle and bring a bag with you if you're out on a walk. Try to pick up things that are laying around because not only is it going to make you feel good, it's going to make people feel good that are walking in that area. It's also helping the environment. So it's honestly just a win, win, win all around. Number 12, offer to carry groceries for someone. This actually happened a couple weeks ago when I was at the grocery store. There was a mom and she had one of her kids in the cart and one of her kids was walking with her and she had a grocery cart full of stuff and you could just, I could just tell that she was flustered. And so I was finished putting my stuff in my vehicle and putting my cart back when I noticed this and I walked over and I offered to to help her put her groceries in her vehicle. And again, some people will just say no and, and it's okay and brush it off because we're often so easy at doing that. But this mom was just so grateful that she was able to put her kids in her vehicle while I put her groceries in the back and just help with that process that I just helped alleviate a little bit of stress off that mom's back. And so if you see someone struggling or you see someone needing help, don't just watch them and pull out your phone and record them and laugh at them. Get out and help. Give a helping hand because you have no idea how much that person might just need to catch a break for even 30 seconds. So helping someone carry their groceries or something. Number 13, send your loved ones reasons why you love them. Again, that kind of goes into the letters and into the text, but just remind the people you love of why you love them. Don't be, don't hold back. If you love something about someone, tell them, tell them those things. We often will tell people the things that we don't like quicker than we will the things that we do like. 
So send them those messages. Number 14, checking in with someone who looks down. Whether this is someone you know or a complete stranger. Again, coming back to our vibration and our energy, we can just tell when someone is not feeling themselves. We just know. Something in us, our instinct, we just know. We can feel it. And so if you see someone is just looking a little down, a little sad, and again, you don't have to pry. You don't have to get into their business. But just offering to check in. How are you? I, I noticed you're looking a little down. Is there is there anything on your mind you'd like to share? Is there any way I can support you? Right? Even just being a listening ear, even just holding space. We don't even, We often so quickly want to fix the problem. Am I able to hold space for you to get something off your chest? Right? Whatever it is. Again, feeling validated is just such a human need that we often forget has such a big effect. But feeling validated and seen and heard really is the recipe for just filling up our hearts and feeling just appreciated. And the last one, number 15, to donate clothes or food or items or things to local charities or families that are in need. We all have so much stuff that we just don't need. So if you have, again, the capability and the capacity to do so, donate some things, donate clothes, donate food, give to charity, whatever it is. Again, a small act of kindness, it doesn't have to be a lot. And I just want to wrap up by saying that radiating kindness, and again, if you can't be the light, if you can't find the light, be the light, is so important. But again, before I conclude for today, I just want to highlight that don't take away from your own self-love in doing so. Because when we begin to give, 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 and we forget about pouring into ourselves, we are not good to anybody else if we are not good to ourselves. So I want this to begin, it it pours into both ways because by helping other people, it helps love ourselves more. And by loving ourselves, helps pour into other people more. But making sure that you're checking into yourself as well. Of how can you check in with yourself? How can you do kind things for yourself? Right? And then when you're at that capacity, being able to give that to other people. The world needs more kindness and more love. And we all have the ability to make the world a better place. Start with loving yourself and doing small acts of kindness. I promise you, they go a long way. I wanna thank you guys so, so, so much. As always, as always, for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. I truly hope you guys are enjoying. I will be posting this episode during May long weekend. So I hope you guys are enjoying your May long weekend. I hope everybody is safe and having fun and just enjoying life. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.